21 most strange things in Mexico that will surely leave you speechless. The country with the most Spanish speakers in the world, the nation that consumes the most Coca-Cola globally, a place with an incredibly eerie museum of mummies Mexico hides numerous mysteries that are guaranteed to astonish you. Join me on a journey to the beautiful country of Mexico in South America to discover the peculiar truths that attract many visitors to explore this place. Number 21. The country with the most Spanish speakers in the world. If you happen to visit Mexico, make sure to learn a few basic Spanish phrases in advance. Mexico is the country with the highest number of Spanish speakers globally, surpassing even Spain, where the language originated. According to a study published in 2015, Mexico has the largest Spanish-speaking community in the world, with 121 million people. This is a result of centuries of Spanish colonial rule from the 16th century until Mexico declared independence in 1810. Number 20. Taste crispy fried insects. If you have a liking for dishes made from insects, head to Mexico to indulge in some unique flavors. Fried crispy insect dishes such as ant eggs with salt, plump butterfly larvae, large black ants, tarantula spiders, beetles, grasshoppers and more are quite popular in this region. You can try these crunchy fried insect delicacies at various restaurants around Mexico. In local markets, these dishes are also displayed in bowls for you to savor. Number 19. Museum of Mummies. El Museo de las Mummias 119 Mummies, located in Guanajuato, Mexico, named El Museo de las Mummias, consistently ranks among the world's most eerie museums. El Museo de las Mummias is a museum of mummies, preserving the bodies of men, women, and children. The mummies are displayed in glass cases in various poses. When observing this peculiar collection, visitors might feel a spine-chilling sensation, especially when witnessing the world's smallest mummy, a fetus taken from the womb of a woman who succumbed to the plague. The Mexican government supports this form of exhibition, considering death as the next cycle of current life. The museum attracts many tourists, with an entrance fee of only PS2 per person. You may visit to experience it, but be warned, it can be extremely eerie. Number 18. Day of the Deceased Festival in Mexico. If you've watched Disney's popular animated film Coco, you're likely familiar with Mexico's unique Day of the Dead Festival. In Spanish, this day is known as Día de los Muertos. This celebration typically takes place on November 1st and 2nd. It is an extended holiday period during which families and friends gather to pay respect and remember deceased family members and friends. According to the local belief, during these days, the souls of the departed return to be with their families. Therefore, every Mexican family decorates altars inside their homes or at gravesites with yellow-themed fruits, various types of bread, sweets, handmade crafts, and more. Additionally, the altars are adorned with lit candles, portraits, and mementos of the departed. Despite its somewhat eerie name, the atmosphere of the festival is lively and vibrant. Throughout the streets, there are parades and extravagant celebrations. Children often participate in street parades dressed in spooky costumes, wearing skull masks and skeleton-themed outfits. Number 17. The Island of Dolls in Mexico. Approximately 11 kilometers from the center of Mexico City, there is a small island holding hundreds, possibly thousands, of old dolls called Isla de las Minecas. These dolls are scattered across the island in various eerie positions, giving anyone, even the bravest, a spine-chilling experience when setting foot on the island. The dolls are hung on trees in the state they were abandoned. Some dolls are missing eyes, limbs, or even heads. Over time, and with the constant changes in weather, the dolls become covered in dust moss, making the eerie landscape of the island even more terrifying. Locals claim that the spirits on Mexico's island of dolls come to life at night and converse with each other. Some tourists even bring their own dolls as a sign of respect and to seek blessings. I wonder if you dare to set foot on this island to admire the dolls, as I find it quite eerie even during the night. Number 16. The world's largest pyramid in Mexico. When we think of pyramids, we often envision grand structures in the vast deserts of Egypt. However, 
the pyramids in Mexico are equally massive and mysterious. The largest pyramid in terms of volume is the Great Pyramid of Colula, located in the state of Puebla, Mexico. In 2016, scientists conducting a study reported on BBC that this pyramid, built around 300 BCE, has a base four times larger than the Great Pyramid of Giza, measuring approximately 450 meters wide and 66 meters high. This structure is not a single pyramid, but rather at least six pyramids built on top of each other. Experts believe each pyramid was constructed at different times. The construction date is estimated to be around 300 BCE, but the builders remain unidentified. Since the 1930s, numerous efforts have been made to excavate the entire pyramid. Over eight kilometers of tunnels have been dug inside the structure for tourist exploration. Number 15. The silent zone in Mexico, known as the Bermuda Triangle without a sea. There is a mysterious area deep within the Chihuahuan Desert called Coahuila, and it has become a lifelong mystery for locals and tourists worldwide. This piece of land is known as known as Zona del Silencio. The silent zone of Mexico lives up to its name. It is an area where radio signals mysteriously do not work. If anyone brings a compass as a backup tool to this area, they will be unable to use it as the needle of the compass will spin uncontrollably, causing confusion about directions. Moreover, stories of encounters with extraterrestrials, mysterious shadow people, and unexplained UFO sightings in the skies have made Zona del Silencio a land of enigmatic and compelling mysteries in Mexico. With its own secrets, the Silent Zone remains largely unexplored by the outside world. There are no houses or people living there, just insects, reptiles, and small mammals. If you ever visit Mexico, you might want to explore this place to see if you encounter any mysterious phenomena. Number 14. Mexico City's Slow Submersion Mexico City, the capital, is built on a former lake bed, and the underground aquifers beneath the city have been gradually drying up due to extensive groundwater extraction over many centuries. Cracks are now forming in the foundations of various areas within the city, posing a risk of infrastructure collapse. According to a study published in the JGR Solid Earth Journal, Land subsidence is also contaminating the underground water source and affecting water quality. Approximately 70% of Mexico City's drinking water comes from underground wells. Any contamination of these groundwater sources could potentially impact the health of a significant portion of the city's population. In the northeast part of the city, researchers observed land subsidence occurring at a rate of 50 centimeters per year. This subsidence is a cause for serious concern leading some to compare the situation to a modern-day, real-life Atlantis. Number 13. Invention of Color Television Color television, one of humanity's greatest inventions, is particularly credited to Guillermo González Camarena, a Mexican man who expanded the world of television from black and white to color. In the 1940s, González Camarena devised a method for transmitting color television known as the STSC system. The first official color television was introduced in Mexico in 1946, marking a significant milestone in the history of television. Number 12. World's highest taxi density in the capital. With a population of 9 million people, Mexico City is comparable in size to other major metropolises like New York and the United States. However, while New York has around 14,000 taxis, Mexico City boasts over 100,000 registered taxis leading the world in both the sheer number and the ratio of taxis per capita. Throughout much of its history, more than half of the taxis in this city were green Volkswagen Beetles. However, by the early 2000s, policies aimed at improving fuel efficiency and safety led to the near disappearance of these iconic green taxis. Number 11. Women-only subway cars. Mexico City has subway cars specifically designed for women, with these sections prohibiting men to create a space entirely safe for women. Like any major city, Mexico City faces high crime rates. According to a 2016 survey, 90% of women in Mexico felt unsafe using public transportation. Another study indicated that 70% of female passengers in Mexico City reported experiencing harassment while on buses or the subway. These statistics have influenced the city's subway policies based on gender. 
in a country where the safety of women or young girls is threatened every day, protecting women is of utmost importance. Number 10. Home to the world's smallest volcano. While Hawaii boasts Mauna Loa, the world's largest volcano, Mexico is home to QX Comate, a volcano that stands at a mere 13 meters tall, located on the outskirts of Puebla. Though it is not active, beneath the volcano lies the world's largest hot water spring with a depth of 23 meters. Compared to Hawaii's Mauna Loa, which stands at 4,169 meters, this volcano is more like a hill. In fact, QX Comate is even shorter than half the height of the Statue of Liberty. Number 9. Mexico, the world's highest consumer of Coca-Cola. With an average consumption of around 163 liters of Coca-Cola per person per year, Mexico is considered the highest consumer of carbonated beverages in the world. Beverage manufacturers like Coca-Cola often distribute their products in the most remote regions of the country, sometimes at prices cheaper than clean water. The state of Chiapas leads the ranking with an average daily consumption of 2.2 liters of Coca-Cola. One of the reasons for Coca-Cola's popularity in Chiapas is limited access to clean drinking water, coupled with Coca-Cola's aggressive marketing campaigns in the local language. Not surprisingly, diabetes is a significant issue in the town of San Cristobal de las Casas in this state, claiming the lives of over 3,000 people annually. The residents here face the simultaneous challenges of obesity, diabetes, heart disease, and a lack of clean water. They believe that the Coca-Cola manufacturing plant on the outskirts of the town is responsible for all of these issues. Number 8. The Birthplace of Chocolate The origin of chocolate lies in the cacao bean, and it was the people of Mexico who first created chocolate. The Maya, Inca, and Aztec civilizations in Mexico cultivated cacao trees and processed them into what they called chocolate. Later, explorers introduced these cacao beans mixed with other flavors to the rest of the world. Cacao was entirely unknown to Europeans until the 16th century. Christopher Columbus discovered cacao beans during his fourth voyage to the Americas on August 15, 1502. He directed his crew to seize a large indigenous canoe known to contain cacao beans. Columbus brought the cacao beans back to Spain, but they had little impact until Spanish monks introduced chocolate to the Spanish court. In the 16th century, chocolate made its way to Europe, sugar was added, and chocolate quickly became popular across society, first among the upper class and later among the general population. Number 7. The Land of Delicious Delights Mexico is a country with an exquisite culinary tradition, renowned for its mouth-watering dishes that leave a lasting impression. Among them, tamales stand out as the most beloved traditional dish in Mexico. This enticing dish is an integral part of every local meal and is often made in large batches, stored in the freezer, and consumed gradually. Tamales are made from corn dough mixed with various ingredients such as meat, fish, lard, vegetables, etc. All the ingredients are wrapped in banana or corn leaves and then steamed. Mexico now holds a record for a gigantic tamal measuring one meter in length and weighing 68 kilograms, created in the state of San Luis Potosi. Inside this colossal tamal is a filling of pork or turkey, accompanied by pickled jalapenos, all wrapped in banana leaves and then baked. It can be said that tamales is the most famous and enticing type of cake in this beautiful country. Alongside tamales is the renowned dish tacos. The taco shell is made from diluted corn dough, and the filling can include various meats such as chicken, beef, pork, fish, etc. The ingredients are properly seasoned before being cooked. When enjoying tacos, they are often accompanied by onions, salsa, cilantro, etc. Burrito is another famous and delicious traditional dish that carries the rich flavors of Mexico and is a must-try when visiting. Number 6. Apartments shaped like a snake. Quetzalcoatl's nest is a complex of 10 Airbnb apartments situated in the midst of a tree-filled area in the city of Norcalpan, Mexico. Nestled in the rolling hills and dense oak forests, the Quetzalcoatl's nest housing complex takes the shape of a snake winding through the ground. 
This architectural marvel was designed by Mexican architect Gavaya Sanoshien, drawing inspiration from Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent deity of the Aztecs. The outer walls of Quetzalcoatl's nest are coated in vibrant colors, such as emerald green and deep violet, mimicking the colors of Quetzalcoatl's feathers. To stay true to the serpent theme, the architecture here predominantly follows curves or circular lines, Occupying a spacious plot of nearly 7,500 square meters, the complex has a total constructed area of about 1,500 square meters, comprising 10 unique apartments. These apartments are located on the snake's back, with three on the upper floor and seven on the lower floor. The interiors of each apartment feature neutral colored walls, creating a contrast with the vibrant exterior, and numerous windows overlooking the lush landscape resembling circular patterns on the serpent's body. If you're impressed by this architectural style, you can even rent one of these rooms when visiting Mexico. Number 5. Mexico is not a third world country. The term third world was coined during the Cold War as part of a political division. Countries aligned with the United States were considered the first world, those aligned with the Soviet Union were the second world, and those not aligned with any bloc were labeled the third world. Although the Cold War ended 25 years ago, the term third world has become synonymous with economically poor countries. When ranked by GDP per capita, Mexico falls somewhere between Turkey and Brazil. Like any developed nation, Mexico has plenty of modern hotels, housing, and exclusive restaurants. However, there is a significant wealth gap while some families have house help and drivers, many Mexican families struggle to make ends meet. Number four. Mexico has 59 varieties of corn. Mexico boasts a multitude of corn varieties, each with its own complex nomenclature. While corn in Mexico is generally referred to as maize, there are many different words for corn in various forms. Mexico, in fact, has 59 different varieties of corn. For centuries, the people of Mexico have cultivated corn, considering it a sacred plant and a precious gift from a higher power despite various threats from international trade agreements and genetically modified imports. In fact, Mexico's love for corn extends to the point where even moldy corn becomes a versatile ingredient in various dishes. This fungus, known as Hutlacoche, thrives on corn after rainfall, transforming corn kernels into unusual growths of white, gray, pink, and black. Mexicans separate these Hutlacoche growths from the corn and then use them to prepare many traditional dishes with rich and flavorful tastes, such as appetizers like quesadillas, corn tamale cakes, soup, or tacos. Number 3. Tequila is an icon of Mexico. Tequila, first distilled in the 1500s to 1600s in the Jalisco region, Guadalajara's capital, takes its name from the primary production area the Tequila region in the Jalisco highlands of western Mexico, where the agave plant flourishes. Tequila is distilled according to Mexico's traditional formula. This alcoholic beverage has a relatively high alcohol content, ranging from 38 to 40 percent, with some specialty brands reaching up to 46 percent. Thus, there's a common joke that true spirit enthusiasts must try tequila at least once. Number 2. The real name of Mexico. Similar to how people often forget that the United States is formally called the United States of America, Mexico is technically called the United Mexican States. However, unlike the United States, this country does not have a tendency to use its full name on many maps, especially in English-speaking countries. This nation comprises 31 states and one federal district, which is Mexico City, one of the most populous urban areas globally. Number 1. Chihuahua is the name of a state in Mexico. Chihuahua, the smallest recognized dog breed globally, is named after the Chihuahua state in Mexico, where it was first discovered in the mid-19th century. Chihuahua is believed to have originated from the native Tequi breed, a small dog raised by the Toltec people of Mexico since the 9th century. However, the Exoloitzcuintli, also known as the Mexican hairless dog, is the true national dog breed of this country. Its name is a combination of Tzolotl, the Aztec god of lightning and death, and its Cuintli, which means dog in Aztec. Fair to say, it looks quite intimidating, with a completely hairless body. 
So we've uncovered 20 strange and fascinating facts about Mexico, from famous pastries to bizarre foods like fried insects or festivals dedicated to the deceased. There's a lot to marvel at, isn't there? But that's not all. Mexico is not the only country with strange things and the harshest prohibitions. We invite you to follow us and continue to Turkey, a place that will truly make you burst. 15 Strange Prohibitions and Oddities That Exist Only in Turkey Hiding between the western part of Asia and the eastern part of Europe, Turkey is a culturally rich Middle Eastern country deeply influenced by the Roman, Greek, Ottoman, Byzantine, and Persian empires that once ruled this land. This long history has turned Turkey into an extremely mysterious country, with many rules and principles that defy logic and are not found anywhere else in the world. Join me in the next few minutes to explore the prohibitions and peculiarities that exist in this country. Number 15. Prohibition on direct communication with single women in public places. No matter how much you like a Turkish girl, it is not allowed to approach her and start a conversation right on the street, even if you know her previously. Turks highly value discretion and respect towards women. They believe that directly talking to Turkish women, especially young or single ones, in public places is an indecent act and may lead to misunderstandings. In Turkish culture, there is a level of respect between genders, especially in public situations. Typically, Turkish men will avoid direct communication with unfamiliar or unrelated women in situations like public transportation, social events, or other public places. This attitude reflects the respect and protection of the honor of women in Turkish society, also signifies the acceptance and respect for the country's traditional and cultural values. If a girl is seen talking to a man on the street, she may be judged as being too casual, and it can be challenging for her to get married in the future because no Turkish man wants to marry a woman who appears casual. Number 14. Prohibition on body language and communication do you often give the OK sign to your friends? If that's your habit, you should correct it immediately before going to Turkey, as it might lead to a disaster. While in other countries, the OK sign represents agreement or approval, in Turkey, it is considered an offensive gesture. Therefore, you should absolutely avoid making the OK sign in Turkey to prevent unnecessary trouble. In Turkey, if you want to say yes or agree with someone, you should nod your head once. If you want to say no or disagree, you should raise your chin, frown, and slightly press your tongue against the roof of your mouth. Also, pointing at someone while talking is considered impolite. For those who have strong self-respect and a firm belief in spirituality, offending them can have significant consequences. Number 13. Prohibition on buying stones antiques. Do not buy any stones or fossils when vacationing in Turkey, as they're considered cultural artifacts and exporting them is illegal. All antiques, especially those with historical or cultural significance, will fall under the same category and owning, buying, and especially exporting them is unlawful. The penalties for this action can include up to 12 years in prison or a substantial fine. In Turkey, markets are among the favorite places for international tourists due to the diverse range of items, especially in decorative item markets. Many of these items are souvenirs or replicas of antiques, but some are genuine ancient artifacts. Some items may be bought and sold within Turkey, but taking these items out of the country is illegal. What makes it complicated is that in Turkey, the definition of antique items not only considers their age and historical significance, but also their rarity. Therefore, distinguishing between allowed and prohibited items can be challenging for international tourists. While cases of confusion are rare, they do happen. Travelers should be cautious when shopping in Turkey to avoid legal consequences. Before deciding to purchase a decorative or souvenir item, it is advisable to ask the seller for legal documentation authenticating that the item is only for display or souvenir purposes. In addition to antique-related issues, tearing banknotes can be considered offensive and can lead to imprisonment for six months to three years. Tourists also need permission to take photos near military facilities in the country. Number 12. Ban on Twitter. If you are traveling to Turkey, be cautious about your Twitter account, as there is a possibility that you will not have access until you leave the country. 
This is because, following the earthquake disaster in Turkey, access to Twitter for users in the country was blocked by the government. Many Twitter users in the country couldn't post tweets about the earthquake that occurred in February 2023. This was considered a foolish reaction by the Turkish government to disaster that claimed over 17,000 lives. They aimed to block any information from the public, most of which was about the shortcomings in the government's rescue efforts. Before this incident, Turkey had also restricted Twitter advertising. According to Turkey's social media law, social media companies without a local representative would face a series of fines. The law allows authorities to remove content from platforms instead of blocking access as done previously. Using Twitter in Turkey poses a challenge and it is advisable to check your account regularly when visiting the country. Number 11. Taxes must have a logo. I should have brought this rule to the forefront because it is crucial and can affect you right from the moment you set foot in the country. That is the matter of choosing the right taxi. For travelers, using taxis is quite common, but in Turkey, it's important not to choose taxis without logos. The reason is that some taxi drivers in Turkey often deceive tourists by taking longer routes or using faulty meters to charge additional fees. Therefore, one thing you should never do in Turkey is to take a taxi without a logo because you cannot determine which taxi brand it belongs to. It's best to choose taxis with logos on the door to use a taxi service with accurate fare meters. Moreover, unchecked taxis could belong to individuals with malicious intent. Surveillance by Turkish police is relatively loose, so you must take measures to protect yourself rather than expect timely assistance from them. Number 10. Prohibition on wasting food? Immersing yourself in local cuisine is one of the most authentic ways to experience a culture. Turkish cuisine is celebrated worldwide, but don't forget to adhere to basic table manners. For instance, when using toothpicks, wandle them discreetly. In Turkey, they are called kurda, and using them without any finesse can be considered impolite. Most importantly, you must eat everything on your plate. It would be considered disrespectful if you leave food on the plate when dining with a Turkish family. Leaving anything behind indicates that you don't like what they provided. This is a sign of maximum respect and the proper behavior to complete everything on your plate. People here highly respect food, considering it a gift from the divine, and wasting it is never acceptable, or else they may face penalties. Even if it doesn't taste good, you should try to finish it unless you want to encounter trouble. Number 9. Belly Dancy I bet you that this is one of the things that attract men to Turkey the most. The captivating belly dances of Turkish women. Belly dancing, also known as Middle Eastern dance, is a traditional and famous dance of the Arab people. But did you know that the origin of this art form is from Turkey? Originally, belly dancing was just a performance art for palace feasts. It wasn't until the late 18th to early 19th century that Europeans became aware of and recognized belly dancing as an art form that honors the beauty and perfection of women. Approaching belly dancing is also an effective way to approach Middle Eastern culture, where belly dancing has become a distinctive feature. From Turkey to Egypt and even India, belly dancing has created significant allure, spreading to many countries worldwide. Nowadays, belly dance classes, competitions, and performances have become familiar. Belly dance is not only for women anymore, even men can practice belly dancing. The health benefits have transformed belly dance from an art form into a sport chosen by many. However, there is an extremely illogical thing existing in Turkey related to this dance, making me skeptical about the principles that the Turkish people adhere to. Number 8. No last names. Everyone has a first and last name, right? Well, not in Turkey. Most people didn't have last names until the Turkish government enacted a law requiring everyone to have a last name or face sanctions in 1934. In the culture and tradition of the Turkish people, the use of last names is not as common as in some other countries. Instead, people in Turkey are often referred to by their first name, accompanied by their father's name. For example, a person might be called Ali, son of Mehmet, where Eli is the personal name, Mehem is the name of his father. 
This creates a distinctive calling system and reflects the importance of family in Turkish culture, certainly. After the government regulation in communication with foreigners or in official documents, Turks had to use the last name system similar to European countries. But in everyday communication, the naming system based on the father's name is still more common. So don't be surprised if you see a Turkish person having at least two different names. It's a quirky and interesting characteristic. Number 7. No revealing clothing allowed. We all know that belly dancing requires extremely sensual attire, at least revealing the waist and hip area. However, strangely, the girls who belly dance are not constrained by the prohibition on revealing attire in this country. For ordinary citizens and tourists, dressing provocatively is something not to be done in Turkey. In this country, where 97.8% of the population is Muslim, the dress culture remains modest, unlike many other countries. When traveling here, it's advisable to wear modest clothing to avoid disapproving looks from the locals, especially when visiting famous mosques in Turkey, such as the Blue Mosque or Yeni Kemi, you should not wear revealing outfits like crop tops, short skirts, or shorts to show respect. With modest clothing, you will feel more comfortable when sightseeing and traveling in Turkey, as you won't attract excessive attention. Number 6. Every 10 days a new plant species is discovered. It's not by chance that Turkey is consistently among the top 35 countries with the most diverse biological hotspots in the world. The country situated between Asia and Europe with extremely diverse geographical and climatic conditions provides a habitat for over 80,000 animal species and 10,000 flourishing plant species. Notably, these figures continue to increase every year. Turkey boasts organic landscapes like forests, grasslands, deserts, freshwater lakes and seas. This creates a diverse living environment for numerous flora and fauna. If you have a great love for nature and want to discover a new plant species on your own, try exploring the map of Turkey, marking national parks, reserves, or simply embarking on trekking and mountain climbing. Who knows, you might discover a new plant or animal species that hasn't been documented before. Number 5. Strangest Wrestling Olive Oil Wrestling Olive oil is always known for its exquisite taste and is present in countless famous dishes. But did you know it's also the main ingredient in a wrestling competition in Turkey? If I hadn't seen videos of this wrestling, I wouldn't believe it, but they indeed coat themselves with olive oil to increase the difficulty of this competition. The Olive Oil Wrestling Festival is considered a tradition that has been around for 658 years. For Turkish men, the festival showcases the strength of men, and each participant takes pride in being part of it. In the wrestling arena, Turkish men will bare their upper bodies, wear buffalo hide trousers, cover themselves in olive oil, and wrestle until they find the victor under the scorching sunlight. The wrestlers take turns until they find the ultimate winner to claim the championship belt and prize money. If you want to witness this oily and lively battle, head to Turkey in July. The handsome and muscular wrestlers at the festival will leave you amazed. Number 4. Prohibition on eating in public places during Ramadan. If you visit Turkey between March and April, remember that it's not allowed to carry snacks around the streets and indulge in them, as it's a foolish thing to do during this time when most people in Turkey are fasting. The month of Ramadan holds cultural and religious significance for all Muslims worldwide. For most of the Turkey's population, strict adherence to fasting rules is emphasized as a way to demonstrate their dedication. During Ramadan, they fast the entire month, which is considered one of the five pillars of Islam. The Ramadan festival is organized according to the Islamic calendar rather than the Georgian calendar. You must ensure that you do not eat or drink anything in public places practicing the annual commemoration. During Ramadan, actions like speaking ill, arguing, or displaying impatience are deemed inappropriate for the spirit of this month. Smoking is a prohibited behavior in the history and teachings of Islam, and it is also considered unsuitable during Ramadan. Therefore, if you visit Turkey during this time, you need to be cautious in every action to avoid being disliked by the local people. Number 3. Bargain when shopping Bargaining or haggling a bit while shopping won't harm you. 
it ensures you get the best price for anything you buy in Turkey. I can tell you that goods in Turkey are often marked up significantly higher than their actual value. Turkey has unique traditional bazaars that are perfect for both exploring local culture and shopping at reasonable prices. Famous bazaars to visit include the Grand Bazaar in Istanbul and Kemeralti Bazaar in Izmir. Handicrafts, carpets, fashion accessories and traditional Turkish delight are some standout items in these markets. Especially, the original flavor of Turkish delight can only be found in these traditional bazaars. But here, you must remember to always bargain before buying, as as I mentioned, prices are often double for foreign visitors. Bargaining can sometimes be quite interesting, and more importantly, you won't end up paying for something that isn't truly worth it. Number 2. The mystery of the name Turkey Did you know that there was a campaign to abandon the name Turkey in Turkey? What? Might sound funny, but it's true. Turkey, the way the country's name is written in Turkish, has been in use since 1923 when Turkey became a new nation after the collapse of the Ottoman Empire. In reality, the term Turk is not new or unfamiliar to the people of Turkey as they have been calling their country Turkey since 1923 when the nation declared independence. The issue here is that the term Turkey when searched on Google results in a jumble of images, articles and dictionary definitions associating the country with the Meliagris or the turkey bird, a large bird native to North America, famously served in Christmas menus or Thanksgiving dinners. Meanwhile, look at the Cambridge Dictionary defines Turkey as something that is extremely unsuccessful or a foolish or silly person. And of course, to avoid the country being associated with the turkey bird or foolishness, Turkey decided to change its name. Number 1. The homeland of Santa Claus and Tulips the man associated with the childhood of children and one of the most enchanting flowers in the world. Both have their origins in Turkey. Santa Claus was born in the region of Batara, in Turkey based on the real-life figure of Saint Nicholas, a Turkish bishop who lived in the 4th century. Saint Nicholas was born into a wealthy family and from a young age, he was devout, having strong faith in God, always helping the less fortunate and having a generous heart towards everyone. One famous tale about him is the story of the gold coins placed in stockings. On one occasion, he encountered a poor family with three daughters of marriageable age, but because of their extreme poverty, no one wanted to marry them. That night, he secretly dropped gold coins down the chimney and they fell into the stockings. The next morning, the father saw the miraculous happening in the stockings and exclaimed, Thank God for His grace. Through that silent act, the three sisters found peaceful family lives and lived happily ever after. As for tulips, although we do not have information about where the first tulips grew during the Ottoman era, this flower was popularized and introduced to European countries. There is speculation that the first tulip seeds were sown when a Flemish envoy met Ottoman Emperor Suleiman in the 16th century and brought them to Holland. So if someone asks you about the homeland of tulips, don't rush to answer as Holland might not be the correct response. The historical landmarks, delicious cuisine and enchanting landscapes of Turkey will undoubtedly captivate you. But don't forget the forbidden things that we just reminded you of. Alright, thank you for watching to the end of the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.